What about socialization? Now, socialization is a continuing process whereby an individual acquires a personal identity, learns the norms, values, behaviors, and social skills appropriate to his or her social position. So, obviously, the best place to learn that is not here. These group of cartoon eight-year-olds who don't know how to get along in the world are not probably the best peer group to learn how to get along in the world with and from. You know, so one of the beliefs that we really have is that mixed age groups, spending lots of time with us in our lives, with other groups of families who are doing the same kind of thing, other kids of different ages, other parents with different cultural backgrounds, all this, this is the kind of social norms we want our kids to be able to fit into, and being herded into a tightly packed classroom full of other kids with one person saying, this is the way you have to behave, and there's a whole bunch of rules around it didn't really feel right to us. Now usually what people mean by socialization is not this, although it's very important. It's actually social. What do you do? All my kids have school friends, all their friends, they go to school and that's, they actually mean like how do they actually get along with people and have friends and find things to do. And we actually spend a lot of energy um, as homeschooling parents making sure that our kids do make, oh I'm out of the camera, sorry. Um, making sure that our kids do uh, have friends and children groups, all of the places that we've lived have really active homeschool communities where families get together, we do field trips together, uh, we do all kinds of events at all times of day, nighttime parties and Friday night drinks and, you know, play dates when they're young to really complicated solo adventure field trips um, when they get a little bit older, get a little bit more independent. Um, so that's the answer to sort of both of those flavors of that question. The next question people have, how do you know if your kids are keeping up? Now this is important. We have a very goal-oriented society. Everything's measured, standards and all this stuff. Frankly, I don't really care. I think it's a horrible way to put people through an education system. I think the, you know, I use the phrase today at lunch, institutionalized education. You know, you have to remember our public education system is built from a time when the um, industrialists and the enlightenment were all a big thing, right? These were sort of academics who said, how can we educate all of us to the same level of standard? And this whole industrialization wave where we realized there were academics and there were workers and we needed a system to educate workers to a certain level and let academics keep thinking about stuff. You were either smart or you were not smart. You did school or you went and worked. And we've kind of built an education system around this sort of pipeline of put your kids in at one end and you get them out at the end and at the other end and they're adults and they're productive members of society. And we didn't really believe that. So we actually don't keep up. We don't know if our kids keep up. We feel like as long as they're happy and they know how to learn stuff, um, that's really the most important thing. So we actually follow a model of homeschooling that in the US is called unschooling. Uh, in England they call it autonomous education. Um, the general pro philosophy is it is um, childhood learning. So you just sort of help your kid find access to information, and professionals and experts and whatever knowledge that they need to chase whatever they're interested in doing at any time. And if you think about it, actually that's how we learn, right? You decide you want to acquire a skill or you want to learn a new thing, you want to try a new thing, you go find a group, a club, a person, information on the internet, whatever, um, to be able to help you do that. And that's really what Tracy and I have really focused on trying to help our kids do. Um, so for us, it's really all about, you know, can our kids be reasonable members of our little society, sit down and have a chat with us at dinner and articulate their feelings and thoughts really well and tell us what it is that they want help with and whatnot. And she likes to call it benign neglect, um, which is essentially, you know, lazy and whatever. But it's true, it sort of fits with our philosophy of homeschooling. And every couple of years, we kind of freak out. We're like, I don't know, it feels like they don't know how to do simple things like pay for things at a store. I'm like, okay, so they don't really know how to pay for things at a store because we do all the paying and debit cards and Amazon and all that stuff, but, you know, they do know how to buy things online, which is <coughs> very common now, and they know how to use their bank card. Do they really need to know how to use cash? Okay, maybe. Let's practice, you know. Let's see if they're interested in practicing. Really, they're not. Please, can I get the Starbucks Order My Coffee Ahead iPhone app, Dad, and use that with my That's what they want to do. They know the skills they need to get along in their society. And we don't really have to try and put our, I guess what we feel like they should know on them. We don't know what they should know. We don't know what they're gonna to need to know 20 years from now. 
Um, so then, usually what happens is, what do you mean they don't follow curriculum? Curriculum, um, Because that's really what I said about unschooling and autonomous education. We don't actually have a curriculum. There's no sets of standards. And, you know, that's kind of, um, for us, really important when you look at, especially when you've got five kids, you learn really quickly that all your kids are different. Uh, when you have two kids, you learn that all your kids are different. Um, and it's really important to kind of approach each person where they are, you know, and help them get to where they want to go. And that means you can't really just get, here's a standard list of things you need to know. Everybody's going to learn it. It doesn't really work that way. You've got kids that are interested in some stuff and kids that aren't. So doing group things and making everybody do the same thing doesn't really work for us. Uh, next up, what about university? Because this is, again, we're a goal-oriented society. Most of us grew up with this idea that you do school, public school, or whatever you did. Then you go to university, and you get a career, do your thing. Um, there are lots of ways to do that. Uh, I'm a huge believer in not going to post-secondary education. For those of you that don't know, I've actually dropped out of every institution of education I've ever attended, uh, high school, university, <coughs> even a community college for a month or so. Um, and I, I've done okay, and I know I'm not, you know, the rule. I'm definitely the exception to the rule. Uh, but I like, what I like to tell my kids is that, you know, if you want to go to university, obviously you should go to university, but I want you to want to go. I don't want you to grow up with this expectation you should go. I don't want you to grow up with the expectation that if you go, everything, like magic things are going to happen, and you're going to end up happy in life and successful in life. That doesn't mean anything. You know, I want you to be happy. So if you ever want to go, you can always go. You don't, there's no decision you can make in your life that is going to make you not be able to go to university when you want to. It may put you behind. You know, you may be like me and say, oh, at 24, let's go to university. I know I've already got three kids, but that's okay. I'm sure I can make three kids a full-time job in university work, but that'll be okay. <laughs> Doesn't work, actually. Um, but, you know, and so my kids have kind of taken that on. And I've got one child in uh, his third year, or uh, third year of university, and he went a little bit late. Um, not for lack of trying, but mostly because we moved around and he got, had to start all over again and he found that the university he wanted to go to needed him to have some other school. So, you know, he just decided, okay, this is what I want to do. He went and figured out what he needed to do to make that happen and went off. And the rest of my kids are sort of following suit. Some of them are going, some of them are not going, some of them are trying to go as a sort of plan B to any other better thing in life that can happen because they hate the idea of school but recognize that what they want to do in life might need an education. So, and that's kind of the attitude we wanted our kids to have. And then, that was literally all I had to say um, about uh, that. I got five minutes for five questions, I guess. So. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Me? I, I said, you know, um, I know you said you didn't want to talk about work, but how does, how does the last point fit into, like, recruiting um, for Expedia? Because I just quickly checked yeah. on LinkedIn and just double-checked, and it says that it's essential to have a bachelor's degree well, so the way I explain this to people and the way I explain it to recruiters that I work with when I hire people, uh, and so remember, don't have a degree. Uh, don't hire people who have way more many degrees than me all the time because they're just not qualified for the jobs I want them to do. Um, is that I write a job description and we come up with requirements for, for roles based on, you know, what you would need if this person, you know, like, I don't know anything about this person, I have no idea. You feel like there's this accumulation of knowledge that gets you to a certain point that all of those things that you list out as prereqs give. The reality is that's not true, right? You know as a hiring manager, you know, you talk to your recruiter and you say, oh, this role, I, I'm actually looking for somebody who's got this kind of experience and this kind of experience and I don't actually care what kind of degree they have. I don't actually care if they have a degree. You know, if they've got 10 years of experience doing exactly what I need them to do, then really what the hell is a four-year university degree going to give them other than passing HR? And I think for us, I mean, hiring managers or recruiters and hiring managers tend to work together pretty well that way. Um, some companies are a little bit harder to get through the HR bar, but I think if you know exactly what you're looking for and can articulate it well to a recruiter, they can kind of help people get through that bar of recruitment. Because there is definitely, I mean, there are careers out there that require degrees and certification and stuff like that. And, you know, we're pretty honest with our kids about that kind of thing. Um, but, th I mean, there are lots of us in technology and in software now, especially if we've been in it for 10 or 15 years, who know that that's not true. 
you know, if you've dropped out of everything and just happen to be in the right place at the right time and making up the right job at the right company, then you gain a wealth of experience that you can turn into actually acing an interview or a day-long interview process in Expedia. University, yep. have they shown any resentment that they at the point where like, oh, dad, mom, like, if fucked up my life. <laughs> 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 have to go through the struggle now to like do a bit of schooling to get in or um, get requirements? Or I don't. I mean, I mean, not that they've told me. I think uh, our middle child has a little bit less love for the freedom with which they were kind of brought up, but. You know, I think if we picked a school, we probably would have picked some crazy hippie like Waldorf school or something like that anyway, and they'd probably be in the same boat, just not at home. Like, you just, you tend to, I feel like it's in her nature to complain about her childhood and her situation. Um, most of them sort of get to that place and they're like, okay, yeah, I, you know, I understand. You know, our eldest who's in university, you know, his, um, I think his biggest lament was just that, and it has nothing to do with homeschooling, it actually has to do with the fact that we moved from England to back to America uh, in 2011, and he had been accepted to an art school in the UK. And just because we weren't citizens and we were moving back to the US, he couldn't go and couldn't afford tuition because you need to get a student visa with <coughs> all the money. And I'm like, unless you have 25,000 pounds, but sorry, we're, you gotta come back with us. So, you know, he found another path because that was what he really wanted to do. But I don't think they complained really about sort of lack of preparedness, because kind of being prepared and flexible is kind of the core of our, you know, training program, if you'll call it that. So, sure. You hear for people that work at home that it's difficult to maintain a work-life balance. I guess, for homeschooling your kids, there's a lot of um, overlap between school and life. But yeah. Can you speak to that a little bit in your experience? Yeah, I mean, I feel, our, one of our big sort of the tenets of our homeschooling philosophy is that sort of, you know, education is what happens in life. So for us as parents, you know, more for my wife probably than me, because I have worked full time out of the house, um, her life when our kids were younger was all about their homeschooling. So as much as we don't sit down and it's school time and now it's time to do work and do this and do that, um, our focus as parents is on giving them experiences and exposing them to stuff and making sure that they're you know, sort of happy and productive in whatever they want to do. Um, because there isn't, uh, you know, I want to say, there, because there's no, like, school time, is really just, like, their day just is, you know? It's kind of like when you're on holiday. Like, you just wake up in the morning and decide what you want to do today and you go do it today. And if you think about it today and you realize, oh, shit, it needed some preparation, then you plan for it for its earliest time and you start to learn then, you know, sort of how to get along in the world by just kind of living. I don't know, I don't really... I mean, I approach work that way too. So, you know, I kind of work to all hours, and I you know weave it with my my work life balance is like an hour on and an hour off, and whether I'm in the office or at home. So, I don't know. Maybe it's just our philosophy to the whole experience, all being part. You know, I work from home, and my kids get to listen to my end of conference calls, and you know, because I do it wherever I have the best Wi-Fi, not where I have the quietest space. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, we haven't really thought about it too much, but. For them, it's like, oh, I get to sleep till 11, awesome. Unless I have to get up at eight, you know, but there's just nothing to sort of break the cycle of this is my life. Was there, was there any difficulties with motivation? Like, did you wake up some days and you're like, uh, you know, your wife would wake up and, because I, I guess with teaching, like, teachers gonna, they get paid, but you also like look at exam results, you know you're, yep. you're having a difference. Like, was there any difficulties there? I mean, I think there's, I would say that the biggest difficulties of motivation are them you know, like, and it's mostly like you, you re it's one of the differences, right? You realize some of your kids like wake up every day, they get up super early, they start working. The, my son who's in university, he's an illustrator and he has known he's been an illustrator since he was like five years old. And since he was about five years old, he'd wake up every day and he'd draw things. Every time he'd have a piece of paper and a pencil, he'd draw things. We're at a restaurant, he'd flip over a menu and he'd scratch out some crazy illustration. I used to hang them on my office wall. Um, so for him, he was so motivated by, you know, getting the stories that were in his head out into pictures and on paper that as he grew, he really started setting himself his own schedule. You know, what are you up to today? Oh, I've got this to do and I've got this to do. And I'm like, you're like a homeschool kid who's like 11. How can you have things to do? <laughs> you know, and that, you know, so for him, it's like super self-motivating. 
I've got some kids that are the exact opposite. Like they are Im immovable force. Unless something comes and you know acts on them, they'll stay in bed or stay playing a video game. And it's kind of like you, as a you know a firm believer in this philosophy, you sort of sit there waiting. What's the thing that's going to get this kid motivated to do something? Um, and you know it's kind of a general social experiment. For my wife, it's kind of a huge blessing, right? If she wakes up in the morning and goes, "Oh fuck, I feel like not doing that," then she doesn't have to, you know. She can say, "Hey guys, I'm taking a poll. Does anybody really want to go to this crappy thing? That's kind of, you know, like you influence your kids by the <laughs> awesomeness of the event they've signed up for. And if you can get a majority vote, then you're like, yeah, great, we're awesome. We're having to watch Jamie Oliver all day on the couch kind of day because we all feel like that. Um, so it's just, it's pretty fluid. Okay. I guess do I have time for any more? One question more, right? Eh? Carl, you've been trying to ask a question since. The beginning. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess it's just following, it's following on from that uh, with regards to like, um, I, I, I feel that the biggest thing that you could possibly give to your child is drive yep. and motivation. That's the, that's the only thing that you're going to need to have in the world. Yep. Then, and that's exactly what you're, you're, you're trying to. Yeah. How, yeah, with what you're saying with those kids that are big Not rocks, motivated. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, do you feel like it's just something? What are you feeling with that? Like, is it something they just haven't found something so, they're passionate about? Or? Yeah, I think. I mean, I feel like that. I'm a. I'm a. I'm kind of a rigid person. Like I, you know, when I set my sights on this is my philosophy and the way I think, then I like believe it yeah. fervently. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what my kids will exhibit. I believe that this is the right thing to do. Like they may turn out to be, you know, living in boxes. On the, you know, I just. I believe at some point something is going to happen that's going to motivate them to. And I, I think for the most part, what happens is um, we convince ourselves that we, because we have experience with our older children, um, that well, the way we've homeschooled will result in this kind of kid. And, you know, it's sort of every once in a while you have to be, you have to remind yourself that, oh, yeah, right, everyone's different. And just because the way we parented the first two kids and the way we parented, like if we, all of our kids, results in different things. And just because I can't see the benefit or the value or the whatever, whatever my kids are motivated to do, spend all of their money on, you know, uh, Dragon Age avatars or whatever the hell it is they spend their money, I don't even know what they spend their money on. Um, but, you know, he's super motivated to do that. You know, he just happens to do it between 11 o'clock at night and 6 o'clock in the morning, and then he wants to sleep all day. You know, I can't today see any real value in doing that, but, you know, he's 14, so at some point something's going to come along and make him <coughs> want to do something different, I hope, you know, but I have to believe that that's going to happen. Because nobody wants to not do that, you know, like at the end of the day, the reality of life hits you and you go, yeah, right, I can't actually live with my parents forever because they're moving now and back to England and I don't want to go and I'm 23, so I'm pretty much going to have to get out because I don't want to move to England, you know, or whatever is going to happen. We've committed to them to get on with our lives when it's time for us to get on with our lives and always be around to support them, but not to coddle them. So, you know, there is these external forces of you're growing up and you have to learn how to find the thing that you like to do and figure out how to go and earn a living and do all that stuff from it. So there's been a consistent message. That they know that they do have to get oh, yeah. Out, and my wife is like, you know, we're like polar opposites and our kids sort of land somewhere in the middle. I'm like, move out when you're 18. I don't want you anymore. <laughs> as soon as you age out, I'm going to start charging you rent and rent is going to be market value for a two-bedroom two apartment. It's way better than what you're living in here. But, um, you know, my wife is like, come home whenever you want. I love you so much. I don't want you to be hungry. I'll give you food. I'll bring you food. I'm like, so, you know, our kids end up somewhere in the middle. They want to move out. They want to try it on their own. They experiment. They go out for a year, they come back, they go out again. You know, my 14-year-old is the one who wants to get out as quickly as possible. He's like, I hate America. I want to move, in, move to Canada. I'm like, well, move to Canada as soon as you turn 18. He's like, great, I can't wait. You know, and he has no plan. He just knows that that's what he wants to do. He doesn't want to live where I want to live, so he wants to go and be on his own. So it's up to him. You know, I guess that's kind of our self-motivation is kind of the whole point of the whole thing, so. Fantastic. Anyway, thanks guys.
Dazza. 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 Dazza.